Welcome to the Land Cruiser Project. Uh, what we do here on this channel is we review auction listings for 80 series, uh, 100 series, and 200 series uh, Land Cruisers that are this or that are listed on like Bring a Trailer or Cars and Bids or you know even even you know, Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. And we go through those listings trying to identify uh, common issues or uh, things that aren't being disclosed or things that you know kind of catch our attention in order to better inform you you know, if you're in the position to be buying one of these. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the vehicle that we're going to look at today. And it's kind of a shame. I'm actually kind of re-recording this. I went over this one live having not looked at it. Uh, but for some reason, YouTube didn't like accept the thing. So I th people were watching live. I mean, there weren't that many. There were like, you know, four or five people. Uh, but like YouTube, for whatever reason, never committed it to the history and acted like I'd never done it. So um, yeah. It was originally titled, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is the project. And yeah, we went through and yeah, identified tons of issues. But let's go through it. Uh, this is a great example, basically, of somebody trying to pass off a, a piece of shit. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this uh, PSFMS, um, it's, uh, you know, we can, we can, yeah, we'll, we'll get into that. Actually, let's uh, yeah, let's go through the high level details first. Uh, so it's got two hundred fifty six thousand miles. Uh, it's uh, it says three locking differentials, and yeah, everything else is you know pretty normal. It says it's got a clean Carfax report and a clean California title. Uh, they indicate that yeah, distributor cap, spark plugs and wires, and thermostat and housing were reportedly replaced in twenty twenty three, and it was recently acquired by the uh, selling dealer. Uh, let's see anything else notable. Uh, it looks like, uh, the rear hatch can only be opened, uh, via the interior latch and missing clear coat is noted on the lower section of the rear hatch as shown in the gallery. Uh, it's also, you know, you kind of notice it looks like it's sagging kind of there to the rear and it's got a mix of tires, which is never a good sign for any vehicle that you're purchasing. Uh, and then the yeah, braking is handled by four wheel discs with ABS as the cell and the seller notes, a soft brake pedal, as well as intermittent squeaks from the steering system. So just like on that face alone and like looking at the photos, like just be, be careful. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like uh, the front, uh, let's see, there's a stereo that's missing the uh, the faceplate. The front seat upholstery and center console armrest have been replaced, and interior imperfections include a gouge in the dashboard and wear on the seats. Uh, and there's the, the engine bay and yep, some of the undercarriage shots. So let's look at the Carfax real quick, and we'll spend a little bit of time on the history here, because this is, you know, this is something, you know, this is an example of, you know, what people need to do to yeah, protect themselves against sellers like this. And yeah, bring a trailer has no interest in protecting you in a deal or, you know, in an auction like this. So this spent five and a half years in Tennessee, uh, 19 years in California for the Carfax. It's had, uh, yeah, just, you know, two owners, according to this, uh, you know, rolling off the mileage looks like there's, you know, kind of a lot of, a lot of gaps, which is normal. Um, but, you know, the mileage at least is pretty consistent. And, yeah, it's been, you know, so it was in Tennessee and then it stayed kind of in the, uh, you know, the desert uh, part of Southern California. And then finally at 255,973 miles, it came to auto experts in Richland, Richland, Washington. So there's the Carfax. Um, let's do, um, let's check out vehiclehistory.com. And let's go ahead and plug the VIN in there and let's see what comes up. Uh, so, yep. So we've got the same like listings from, or same photos from the listing. Okay. Um, you know, it matches the same area, uh, you know, and you know, we'll go, we'll go through the, those in, in detail here, but yeah, we've got lots of uh, historical sales listings. So we can see the one just recently, right within the last week or two. So this was listed just before and they were asking 17,500. Uh, which if that's a, you know, a triple lock vehicle and it's clean, that might almost be reasonable. Um, and we'll, we'll go over why that's, uh, yeah, something else is going on there. Uh, in 2022, so almost a full year before this, uh, you know, only 25 miles previously, it was, you know, it looks like it was auctioned off, uh, more or less the same condition it looks like. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, you know, in an auction lot, that's definitely not the type of vehicle that you want to buy. Uh, yeah, interior looks pretty gross. And I know, I know it's kind of hard to see this, but, um, yeah. So, so there's, there's that. And then, yeah, we've got this other photo. This is from, you know, kind of what, two years ago, a year and a half, two years, no, two and a half years now. No, that's a year and a half. <laughs> uh, another auction photo, uh, like similar mileage. So this thing basically is like sat, but you can see it's got this, uh, you know, front grill on it and, you know, looks, 
in a similarly rough condition. If you look at the interior and the carpet here, it looks just disgusting. Uh, something's not right. Um, yeah, you can see. Yeah, I was going to say the steering wheel looks bent, but yeah, it doesn't. Anyway, uh, yeah, engine bay looks like a mess. And I mean, this is almost a salvage type vehicle. So um, yeah, so definitely like never buy a car without at least plugging it into this and seeing, you know, if it's been auctioned. Uh, so, you know, now, you know, you know what you're kind of getting into, uh, but let's go through the rest of the photos. I will note, I did watch the video and yeah, this PSF Motorsports, we can pull that up. Okay. All right. So here's, yeah, let's pull up PSF Motorsports. Looks like they've got a website, um, you know, good reviews. Looks like they're, you know, tapping into this, you know, off-road overlanding crowd. Uh, they've got the vehicle listed here you know, they're not showing the price in accordance with the, the you know, the bring a trailer uh, thing, but you know, and there's, you know, kind of like a big, long, uh, you know, big, long story on it. Um, yeah. So maybe let's read a little bit of this. So originally shipped to the dealer in late of 1995, blah, blah, blah. And then the car was repainted white. Yeah, it has a clean title, no history of accidents, and a thorough maintenance record, it says. I didn't really see that in the Carfax. I saw, you know, hit or miss uh, records. Uh, it's got an engine. <laughs> and then, let's see. Upon taking delivery of the vehicle, the current dealership, PSF Motorsports, has spent time on some of the imperfections in the paint and overall it looks phenomenal now it says although there is some clear coat cracking at the lower portion of the hatch near the bumper uh, psf also went through the fj it's an fzj but good try and updated the distributor plugs and wires yeah basically probably just to get it running a small coolant leak was observed from the thermostat housing so the thermostat housing have now been replaced as well it says it's a great starting point no mention of the lockers let's double check that with like a control f Okay, so no mention of lockers here. Okay, nowhere in the ad. It's got, uh, oh, it says the electric diff lock functions properly, shifting first into the rear lock and then into the front and rear lock together. So it says that in here. That's insane. But it says there's absolutely no rest. The underside has never been undercoated. All right, so yeah, they say that it has locking front and, and deer or front and rear diff locks. This is going to be great. <laughs> All right. So let's go through the photos. Well, actually, yeah, let's, let's go through the photos and just point out some of the imperfections. I already went over this in that live thing that just didn't, didn't happen for some reason. But, uh, so looking here at the front fenders, you can see the lights, they've got the clear corners. That's done because the, those Amber front corners that would have come on this, they, um, yeah, they're like unavailable. You, you can't really get them. Uh, also note that the side mirrors aren't the same color as the body as they should be. Um, you know, I noticed on at least the other photo, you can see there's like a little like condensation in here, uh, like inside and we'll get better shots of that later, but the sun's shining on that far side of the vehicle. So that should be like drying out already. So it's a little surprising that there's condensation there. So this could totally, this condensation could be outside the vehicle. Um, maybe, maybe not. Uh, you can see here the flaking clear coat. Uh, it kind of looks like paint runs uh, in that photo, but yeah, there's a detail photo, you know, showing that it's yeah clear coat uh, failure. There's a nice little ding here, and it looks like the you know the bumpers have basically been all spray painted black. This is supposed to be kind of like a chrome. You know, otherwise, yeah, from ten feet away, paint job looks okay, but you can definitely see this like condensation. Now. If this condensation's inside, this is a huge problem. That means like water's getting in and, you know, there's, you know, kind of like a, you know, maybe a, like a, not a mold, but, you know, maybe the center of drains are clogged or whatnot. Um, but yeah, let's get back to the photos here. So you can see how this clear coat's painting or peeling off. Uh, it's hard to believe that they did any, uh, you know, kind of like any primer or any prep. Uh, the, the original Toyota paint is going to be a single stage, right? It's all in one. Uh, so but this stuff, seeing as it's, you know, maybe got a clear or it's both the clear and the white that they painted is flaking off. Um, yeah, that's that's not how it would have been been done originally. You can see a handful of dings. I also note that this uh, weather strip seems to be in the wrong spot. It, it should be, you know, tucked up into this gap and, you know, not hanging down there. Um, yeah, moving here to the rear well, looks like there's overspray into the wheel well, both in the front and the back side. So this is on the driver's side of the vehicle. Uh, you know, so, you know, whatever, it's just a paint job. 
Um, you know, carpet, at least from this side, looks pretty good. The steering wheel has been covered up. Uh, so who knows what that actually looks like. Maybe see a little like stitching issue here at the top. Um, the leather doesn't quite match between these two and, you know, but otherwise it looks, looks fine. Little overspray in the door jam on the hinge. Um, you can kind of see the carpet's a little gross down here. Uh, so it's missing a little blank cover here and the yeah, better shot of the carpet. Yeah, that looks pretty nasty. The original uh, plastic kind of reinforcement for the, you know, for your heel uh, that's been, you know, pulled away and it's not present. From here, it doesn't look, you know, totally awful. Um, this uh, carpet's, you know, kind of bent down and not in the right spot. And then there's, you know, they're missing a fastener here holding that console together. Uh, you know, wears noted here on the armrest. Also, um, there should be a, a black little trim piece both on this side and on the far side. You can see that's missing. Uh, you see some wear of people getting in and out. That's, you know, that's very common for, you know, this amount of mileage. Moving to the passenger side, uh, carpet maybe is a little, you know, gross down here at the bottom. Not sure what's going on there. It looks pretty nasty. Uh, similar overspray going on. And yeah, the leather on this seat, it looks like it's been, you know, like repainted. You can see how it's kind of like, it's got a weird texture and it's kind of like chunky. Yeah, that's not how it should be. Um, also noting, you know, you can see the, the little chunk out of the dash and then the uh, the console lid doesn't match. Looks like they got it out of a, a gray interior. Similar missing the screw here, but this is, yeah, this is a good point to bring up. So this has obviously been shampooed. So there's probably some pretty significant staining that was there. You can see that in those other auction photos that we saw on vehicle history, but you can also see, look at these fasteners and look at the support under here. See how it's all kind of like milky. That's a sign that like water's been getting into here. So you yeah, definitely need to pull this carpet back and make sure that it's yeah no longer getting wet in there. But, you know, I will say it's, it's, you know, maybe that there's no condensation on the inside uh, window, uh, at least there's evidence in this photo, you know, at least through this reflection. So that's maybe a, a good sign that yeah, it's not, you know, super moist in there. Uh, something weird's going on here that shouldn't be pinched. And again, like this light housing, yeah, something that's just not quite right. Good to see there's not a crack in the dash, but yeah, with that big chunk out of there, it kind of renders this thing, you know, the dash worthless <laughs> for, for resell if you part this thing out. Uh, looking at the steering wheel, you can see the steering wheel itself, like it's got some weird discoloration here. And yeah, who knows what's going on under the cover there. Yep, so 256,000 miles. Yeah, so you've got a front uh, and rear diff locker switch. Uh, it looks like, you know, somebody is very proud of it and they like to just actuate it over and over and wore off the lettering. <laughs> um, yeah, going through the rest of the photos here, there's the big chunk and these other like cracks in the dash. Um, you can, yeah, yep, yep, yep. All right. Yeah. The, the leather, this is certainly a weird, it's a weird grain. doesn't really match the rest of the, yeah. I mean, the normal leather that we see here, um, looks like it's been heavily shampooed and cleaned in the back seat as well. Uh, you know, corrosion's kind of noted on this uh, door latch and then overspray on the, the sensor for the door. Yeah. It's hard to tell if that condensation's inside or outside. It's probably outside. But this thing's, yeah, it just looking at like the door jams, like it's it's lived a pretty rough life. Yeah, heavily shampooed rear carpet. Um, some, you know, some something going on, some crud on the door. Lots of, I don't, I don't know. It's like they tried to pull it off. So those look like stress marks in that plastic trim. And then yeah, it looks like the seatbelt. It's been stuck in the door jam a couple times. Uh, this is how you get into the back hatch, apparently, right? So you got to climb over the seats and uh, yeah, open up the door with that handle there. Uh, yeah, it's missing a little plastic cover for that, and obviously the um, the wipers in the in the wrong spot. It's not going back to where it needs to be. Uh, missing spot on the carpet on the rear tailgate. I mean, this thing is just it's a, maybe a step above salvage. Um, looking here at the back. Yeah, this is like very, very curious. So obviously it's been shampooed. Maybe that's what this residue is. But if that's the case and like that's the type of residue that this carpet's generating, yeah, this thing had to have been, yeah, super nasty. Even the headliner looks like it's been shampooed. Just, yeah, it looks, looks really gross. I, I can't imagine this thing smells good inside. 
All right, moving in the engine bay, yeah, you're, you don't have a, a fan shroud. This radiator hose isn't in the right spot. I see the main engine wiring harness isn't on the little mount here. So who knows, you know, what that's doing as it's going by the EGR. Um, you know, they mentioned that they had done, you know, a distributor and new wires and stuff. None of it's retained, you know, in the proper, you know, it doesn't have like the, the little finger thing to keep it there. Just kind of looks like it's thrown together. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, looking at this, I'd walk away. All right. Regarding the, um, the diff locks. Uh, so you can't see the top part of the differential, unfortunately, um, in order to validate whether or not this have has diff locks or not. I mean, it's got the switch, but yeah, and it's nothing, nothing in the video. Um, also in the video, it talks about how, you know, it's, uh, or sorry, in the listing, it talks about how it's got ABS. Uh, however, the airbag light and the ABS light are on in the video. So be sure to check that out. Um, yeah, I mean, the frame looks pretty good. Minimal, you know, minimal photos of everything. Also on the rear diff, you can't see that diff lock. Um, yeah, I and mean, we'll get into that. But it shows as a K924, uh, meaning it should have the lockers. But yeah, my takeaway in the live video was that it, yeah, probably didn't. Um, you know, just based on the fact that this thing's been through auction. But yeah, so 17000 bucks worth? Yeah, no. Also, um, you know, currently bid up to $9,000 with six days left. I mean, that's for this, this thing's like totally roasted out, roached out. It's, it's so nasty. It is not worth even that. Um, so scrolling down here to the comments, looks like this individual, Dan Weiser said, you know, read this before bidding. Um, so he says, this is purely my experience with this Lion Cruiser. I have no relation with the current seller as an avid collector of 80 series. This was my Land Cruiser. I bought online via dealer website in Southern California when it got shipped to our shop in Washington. I was surprised to find out that the K294, which should be triple locked, was not there. Only the door sticker and interior switch. Unfortunately, the axles were swapped and in my ownership, it was unlocked. So um, they then asked the seller to you know, indicate and to show photos of the axle, show it um, you know, with the lights being engaged and all that. Um, Further, the, this person goes on to say, but all brakes were completely shot. Uh, transmission was toasted, engine overheated, blown head gasket, which is why it showed up at the auction websites, you know, with, um, you know, mechanical damage. Um, ended up basically salvaging it through Copart and lost big money. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of comments saying, you know, three differential lockers mean big money. Watch the bidding sword. Like these, these people have no idea what they're talking about. Um, you know, 80 series of factory lockers. They just look at the sticker and they don't do their homework. Now, maybe the seller will surprise us and maybe uh, locked differentials were, you know, were put into there. But I mean, I would, I would be ashamed to have my name on, on this vehicle, you know, being described as having lockers and all that. So we'll see what comes of it. Definitely something to, you know, to keep an eye on and see, you know, maybe those, lo maybe locked axles were put back in. I don't know. But yeah, stay, stay away from this one. I'm not even going to offer a price because it's already like bit over what's reasonable for something like this. Um, even locked at this mileage, like before the pandemic, you know, this type of vehicle wouldn't have gone for any more than like four or five grand. Um, again, with it having been, you know, more or less, you know, salvaged, <laughs> uh, you know, gone through auction in that regard, you know, just with a totally nasty interior. I mean, that puts the, you know, the price even, even lower and not having the axles makes it even more worthless. So anyway, just remember, bring a trailer is not out there to protect you as a buyer. Uh, just do your homework and yeah, protect yourself. Um, anyway, so yeah, thanks for checking this out. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and hope you have a great day.